So in that continual pursuit, and I gotta say, I'm somewhat failing at it, in 2017 to hashtag make wrestling fun again, I'm trying to do different and new things. So one of them, every once in a while, I've decided I'm going to do a hashtag not wrestling Q&A video. Instead of doing a video talking about professional wrestling and crapping on it, to fill some of that content gap, why not talk about other things that are important in this world? Some of you may care, some of you may not. But again, at the end of the day, I'm giving you fair warning if you don't want to watch a non-wrestling related video on this channel because the title references that it's not wrestling related and the fact that it's a hashtag not wrestling Q&A should give you the clue. But surely there'll still be comments about it. So it is whatever. Well, let's go ahead and get started and let's see how this goes. And I tried to gather together as many questions as possible. Couldn't do every single one, but thanks to you guys, I did tweet OTR Central with your non-wrestling questions. Sue Pete Corvin kicks us off. Thoughts on President Trump and what he's done so far? Should have figured this question was going to come up. Um, you know, I, I think it's well documented that I'm not a fan of his. I cannot believe that the city out of country actually voted for him. On the flip side, I can't believe the city out of country actually presented Hillary Clinton as the option. And for a long time, I was passing that conspiracy theory of the only reason Donald Trump ran was to help Hillary Clinton get elected. You almost wonder now, on the flip side, maybe there was a part to it of the only reason Hillary Clinton ran was to help Donald Trump get elected. Um, in terms of what he's done so far, what has he really done? I mean, there's a lot of gesturing and a lot of this and a lot of that, but there's not a lot. I mean, you can talk about travel bans and deporting people and, and some of those things, but a lot of it is all gesturing and pontification and, um, you know, just marketing. And that's what he always does really well. Uh, my, my caution is this, is for the people that did support him and did vote for him, especially those working class voters that think he's actually going to bring back the type of jobs that they could get or the type of jobs they would be interested in, you probably have another thing coming. And that's just really, honestly, the truth of the matter. And you'll find out, you'll find out just how much he is like a lot of the old GOP ideas that are frankly old and very dated, especially the supply side argument. It's just a very flawed old way of doing things and it doesn't match the digital reality of the world. If you give a company more money by subsidizing them on the backs of taxpayers, by cutting corporate tax rates, and allowing more tax breaks to bigger companies and corporations, all that's going to happen with those bigger corporations, they're going to increase bonuses paid out to executives. Those companies are going to buy back more stock, and they are going to automate their processes with that extra capital they have on hand for the long-term savings of not having to pay employees not only wages, but also talk about health care benefits, 401k matches, uh, paying into Social Security and Medicare and unemployment taxes, all of that. So this is supply side will really work. I mean, you look at Kansas, it just, all it does is blow a hole in the budget. But, they'll learn. We'll find out. For the people that oppose Donald Trump, here's, here's my caution. If you bitch and complain about everything, eventually it all becomes white noise. Pick and choose your spots, pick and choose your battles. Because, especially when it comes to Trump and his team trying to set that whole narrative about, uh, fake news and the media being out to get him and the thing is rigged against him, all you do by crapping on every single thing that he does and paying attention to him and feeding that troll monster ultimately is you validate everything that he says. So you're actually working against your own interests. But again, that would be America, a country full of people that work against their own interests for reasons that are unbeknownst to me. Um, pick and choose your spots, pick and choose your battles. But at the end of the day, let him go. Let him do things his way the next few years. You're so angry about it. Make sure that you get behind better candidates. You help push those better candidates. And then ultimately go out and vote when it matters. In your local and state elections. In the midterm elections. In 2020. You know, that's where you affect change. That's where you make a difference. All this crap about not hashtag not my president. Yeah, at the end of the day he is. Even if you didn't vote for him. This is the same crap eight years ago that you were complaining about when Republicans and Tea Party people, when that whole Tea Party movement founded all those right-wing crazies, that in large part will try to sit there and hide their displeasure about the government under the guise of 
taxation and so on, but it really was a reaction to Barack Obama being president. And that's all it was, plain and simple, because where the fuck were they talking about fiscal responsibility and tax policy and those type of things during the eight years of George W. Bush? Uh, exactly. But you are now acting in the same manner, and you are now doing the same shit. And it's pathetic. There are much bigger and more important things in the world to worry about, frankly. Go about living your day-to-day -day life. Sometimes I may tweet about some of the things that he says or some of the things that he does, but I'm not going to sit there and do it about every single thing. Why? Because the guy is so insecure that he lives for the reaction. He needs the adjuration. He needs the attention, most importantly. You're feeding into the monster, and you're helping feed the narrative. So just stop. Just stop. Let Trump care go through. Don't bitch about it. Let it happen. So that way, when it's a fucking disaster and solves nothing and only creates bigger budget problems and blows up people's um, finances, that will speak louder than anything that any protest could possibly do. But in the meantime, people need to get laid, get a life, move the fuck on. He got elected based off of the stupidity of our system. It is what it is. And you got to deal with it for at least four years. And if you continue to bitch about it, you might get it. But what has he really done so far? The answer is not very much. Moving on. WNC Podcast uh, says, Add Johnny Florida thinks that Yao Ming in his prime would be better than Michael Jordan in his prime. How wrong or right is he? Well, number one, seeing that his, hat, his Twitter handle says Florida as part of it, um, and that kind of speaks to it in and of itself. I mean, Jesus Christ. I was a huge fan of Yao Ming. He's worthy of his spot in the Hall of Fame. But in his prime, he's not even a top five center of all time. And you think that he's better than the GOAT in his prime? Like, seriously, even if you want to say, ooh, Yao Ming would have been at least a top five center of all time. What would have happened if he would have faced Hakeem the Dream Olajuwon? Hakeem would have ate his fucking lunch alive. And that's no disrespect to Yao Ming. That is all the credit in the world to the spectacularness and the greatness of, in my mind, the best all-around center in NBA history, Hakeem the Dream Olajuwon. Michael Jordan is the GOAT. And you're talking about Yao Ming being better in his prime? If he would have been better in his prime, then he would have totally and thoroughly, completely dominated somebody like a Shaquille O'Neal. He had his moments. He played well against him at times. But he would have owned Shaq. He would have dominated Shaq. He couldn't even do that. How the fuck is he going to be better than the GOAT? That's just dumb. On the one hand, opinions are like assholes, and everyone has one, and usually they stink. This is clearly an example of when an opinion is not an opinion. It is just fucking stupid and just fucking wrong. Like if some if it's a sunny day and somebody says, well, I think it's cloudy and there's not a cloud in the fucking sky. It's not an opinion. They're just fucking wrong. And that's exactly what we're dealing with here. Ridiculous. My JJ 1279 is Darth Vader the best movie character of all time? I don't know if he's the best. I mean, one of my favorites, I suppose, but I don't know if he's the best. Uh, Gary Lagaswarin, what car do you drive? An SUV, a 2015 Ford Escape. Honestly, as you get a little older, you start to appreciate the fact that you don't have to get down so low into a vehicle. I like being able to more easily and effectively get in. Because I'll have, with my back, I'll have the good days and the bad days. And on those bad days where I'm really stiff and it's really hard to maneuver, um, I appreciate the fact that I can just kind of stand up and still get in. I don't have to duck way down and then worse off. Now, it's not the getting in part that's tough. It's the getting out part. That's some other. Skankunk 1960, clearly a South Park fan, and two decades later, that show is still going somehow, some way. When watching a porno, are you the type to get invested in the story, or do you just skip to the good bits? <laughs> yeah, I don't have the patience for the story. Why do I need tw fift 10, 15 minutes of crappy story and horrible, cheesy bad acting to get to Jada Fire squirting or girls rubbing on each other. No, that's the part I want to get to with the story. That must mean that you watch the story. And that's probably what you get off to is the really bad acting. Once they take the clothes off, you lose interest. Oh boy. 
MJK1877, do you often watch MLS? <laughs> Jeff watching soccer. Hey, I'll say this. I'll say this. MLS has carved out a nice niche in this country. I hope someday that it actually impacts the U.S. national soccer team on the men's side to the point where we actually send a more viable and competitive team to the World Cup every four fucking years. You would think a com country that's supposed to be so great and so rich we would be able to afford more resources to soccer with the 300 plus million people that we have in this country and effect positive change and actually send out a better men's national soccer team. That's what I was hoping MLS was going to do, and frankly, it really hasn't. People like going to soccer, and soccer games can be fun to go to, but I could give a shit less, honestly. Uh, Musgrave322, do you really believe that the Super Bowl was rigged so that New England could win it? No, I think that's dumb. If anything, you would have expected the exact opposite, that the Super Bowl would have been rigged by Roger Goodell and the powers that be to ensure that Tom Brady and the New England Patriots did not win it. Why in the hell would Goodell want Brady and the Patriots to win the Super Bowl? So no, it wasn't fucking rigged. Atlanta just choked, period. At Dusty Rozier, who made the worst career move, LeBron James or Kevin Durant? Easily, Kevin Durant. And the reason is this, is that a lot of people naturally gravitated to Kevin Durant once LeBron James came out with the decision because they viewed Kevin Durant in many ways as being the antithesis to LeBron. Here was the humble guy not seeking out the attention like LeBron, not whining and crying about the situation, not looking to put his tail between his legs and pick up his ball and go fucking down the South Beach. You know, here was the guy that was staying in the smaller market he was going to make it work there. It'd be great to see him win the championship as the premier franchise guy, not having to go to somebody else's team. And then Kevin Durant dropped his balls, grew a pussy, and went to Golden State. And it's that simple. It was a punk-ass move. To sit there and complain about Westbrook or complain about this, look at yourself in the fucking mirror and figure out why the fuck you couldn't beat the Warriors last year in the playoffs when you had them on the goddamn ropes. It just spoke to me to the lack of killer instinct of Kevin Durant. It spoke to the lack of courage and determination and heart of Kevin Durant. I lost far more respect for Kevin Durant doing what he did than LeBron James and what he did. And I don't know if Durant going back to an Oklahoma City in a couple of years would change any of that. It was just the ultimate punk out move. LeBron's situation was entirely different. He was in an environment in Cleveland that was pretty bad, and they were nowhere near being a championship team, no matter what heroics LeBron put in place. Kevin Durant was on a team that, I, if I remember correctly, didn't they have a 3-1 lead on the freaking Warriors in the Western Conference playoffs? They were a championship contending team. They had made the finals before with their stars. And even after trading off the James Hardens of the world, this was still a team that was in the mix. Different situations. Much worse for me for Durant, even though we always think of LeBron's as being worse. And LeBron's was not nearly as bad as Durant. Uh, at M. Rout. Oh, Mr. Rout has a question. How much do you like cock? About as much as you love Christian. How about that? Now, isn't that ironic? Mr. Rout, the one who his most notable hashtag is probably hashtag gay for Rout is asking me how much I, Jeff, the Schleig Daddy, like cock. Yeah. Okie dokie, moving on. Anarchus, what do you think about Oprah's possible run at the presidency? I'll pass. It'd be a chance to have her first lesbian president. Oh, did I say that? Um, no, I'd have much more interest in Michelle Obama running for president, frankly, than I would Oprah Winfrey running for president. Everyone wants to talk about Donald Trump and his ego. Oprah has a massive fucking ego. And you could buy into the things that she cares about others and all of this. And maybe she does. But, you know, be careful with that sometimes. Because that can be all for show. And that could all be with certain ulterior motives in mind. Which is sometimes what Oprah strikes me like. And furthermore, does she really have a grasp of important issues? I don't think she does. So no, sounds great for maybe some people to fantasize about, uh, but I would pass. I would pass. Uh, at Nate Comeback, the Raiders need middle linebacker running back help in the draft. Who should they target? Um, at pick 24 in round one, 
If Ruben Foster drop, drops because of some injury concerns and the crap that happened at the Combine, he's the slam dunk choice. I don't believe Hassan Reddick from Temple will be there. Zach Cunningham maybe, and he could potentially be a good option, although I think he's more outside linebacker than he is middle linebacker. In terms of running back, if either Alvin Kamara or Christian McCaffrey are there at 24, boy, oh boy, I know the Raiders have a lot of needs on defense, but man, it would be incredibly appealing and tempting to take one of those two difference-making factor feature backs uh, to put in that backfield with Derek Carr, to have his complementary weapons uh, to the guys like Crabtree and Cooper in the passing game. It would take that Raiders offense to another level. So even with all the needs on defense, I could strongly advocate for the Raiders taking a running back at 24. I really, really could. Um, and those two guys would be the ones that stand out to me. A little bit later in the draft, maybe somebody like a Marlon Mack uh, would make a lot of sense. Uh, DTWP75, if Marvel ever brings She-Hulk to the screen, who would play her? Um, say Charlotte, but then it would just be He-Hulk, also known as the Hulk. Uh, <laughs> Penis power. <laughs> I fucking don't know it. I don't care. <laughs> Grace X Lord, are you a Tim Tebow supporter or hater? Kind of indifferent to him. You know, when the media was sucking on his schlong, uh, it got a little irritating and a little annoying. Uh, but at the same token, I thought he got kind of hose bagged in Denver um, and then hose bagged by the NFL in general. Um, I have no problem with him pursuing baseball. Why not? And if you're the Mets, you know, is it really that bad to bring him in? Don't give me that shit about he's taking a spot from somebody else. Because let's face it, the majority of the guys in the fucking minor leagues won't make the fucking show anyways. And if those guys were good enough to make the fucking show, they would have a spot in the Mets farm system or somewhere fucking else. Now, wouldn't they? I mean, that's the way I look at it. I actually hate on more things like, wasn't he homeschooled, but he got to play high school football and then he got to college? That's the type of shit that I think has to kick fucking rocks. You should not be able to fucking be homeschooled and then be able to enjoy the benefits of playing a sport at a public or private school. No, you should have to go to that school and learn some of the social skills that are necessary in life in order to play at one of those schools and play those sports. That's what I have a bigger issue with. So the public or private school is not good enough to fucking teach your kid, but it's good enough to have them play on the fucking football team. No, fuck you. You either enroll and play, or you don't enroll and you don't play, period. In general, just homeschooling, the whole concept of it is fucking stupid. Especially from a standpoint of, if you're a taxpayer, your tax dollars, your property tax dollars, I should say, are going to fund those public schools. Why wouldn't you want a return on that investment? That's dumb. Oh my god. It's fifth hour. What am I going to do? I'm going to watch more. I mean, come on, give me a fucking break. Homeschool is not real school, and I don't give a shit if any of you actually were homeschooled. You know what the fuck I'm talking about? That's just basically circle jerking a bunch of fucking years so that way you can take the equivalency exam. Fuck off. Spawn4288, do you see the Titans trading back in the draft? I'd see them potentially moving pick 18 to get Brandon Cooks, um, or if they don't, could they potentially peel back from 18 um, to get picks later in the draft, perhaps? Uh, but what is the market going to be for that? I don't know. I don't know if they need more picks at this point. They just need to get good players, if that makes sense. Because they've got their franchise quarterback. They've got pieces in the running game. They've got their bookend tackles on offense. They've got a guy like Jarrell Casey to build their defense around. They've got some decent talent at the edge rush position in their linebacking court. They need impact players. And they need quality players. They don't need a quantity of players at this point. Um, uh, Ampex199 Chase, how did you become a fan of Dale Earnhardt Jr.? I've never really been a huge fan of NASCAR, but one person that I always looked to and I was like, man, he's cool, he's got swag, he's a badass, was Dale Earnhardt Sr. So as you can imagine, being a fan of the Intimidator and kind of the way he conducted and carried himself, a bit of a red ass, but he was also very personable, you know, and let's face it, he was all over the place from a mainstream standpoint in terms of marketing and endorsements and so on in the 80s and 90s, uh, it was only natural that I would become a fan of his son, Dale Jr. And that's, you know, that's kind of how it is. Um, and I stay a fan of his because I actually think Dale Jr. has a decent head on his shoulders. Um, I think he gets it um, from a bigger scale perspective too. 
I've just always been a fan of Junior going years and years back. And like I said, part of that is, no, no doubt, most of Junior's fans were Intimidator fans. It's, that's the way it works. Uh, at MFA2, or Matt MFA2, have you ever been out of the country? Um, where would you like to visit? Well, I can tell you this much. Being somebody from the Midwest, when you move to the South, especially here in Richmond, Virginia, it feels like a whole different fucking country. I mean, these stupid fucks celebrate the Confederacy like it was something great and wonderful. Not something that was perpetuated by a bunch of traitorous slave owners and slave traders and slave abusers. I mean, you, you go down Richmond, Monument Avenue, they have monuments to Jefferson Davis and Robert E. Lee, Stonewall Jackson, traitors, slaveholders, should have been hung for treason and shot. But they're celebrated here. Route 1, at one point in time, is called Jefferson Davis Highway. You know, I think the state of Virginia still technically has the Robert E. Lee holiday on the books. Why do we celebrate these people? They do not deserve to be celebrated. They just don't. It's like this whole thing from the North of trying to appease the South, in part for the, the effort that the North bankers during the Civil War time were actually funding, trying to protect the investments they had in the cotton industry, it feels like a different fucking country down here. And I can only imagine if you live like in Alabama or Mississippi or Tennessee or Kentucky or West Virginia, one of those backwoods fucking places. I can only imagine how much of a different country it feels like compared to the rest of the U.S. But here, this feels like a different fucking country. It really, really does. I mean, oh my god. Uh, where would I like to visit? As many countries as possible, honestly. And to be serious. So I've never been out of the United States. So I'd like to go to as many countries as possible. Uh, and then also, will the Cubs repeat or is it the Indians year? You know, the Indians hopefully getting their rotation back to full health, assigning Bedouin and Carnacion. Uh, they should be in a really powerful position. At this moment in time, the Cubs are the champions and they are the champions until somebody proves otherwise. Even though they've lost some pieces, I still feel like it's a team that can contend. I think the Cubs can repeat. Um, I think the Indians could win it all. Or we could have two entirely different teams in the World Series that we're not thinking about. And that's more likely to happen in baseball and this year as opposed to the Cubs winning it again or the Indians getting back and actually winning it. Just the way it works. Uh, let's see here. K. Nokaj. As a 20-year-old, should I be concerned about the future and jobs and so forth? Yeah. I don't think because things are necessarily any more morbid than they have been in previous times. It's just It's always a valid and legitimate concern. But based off of the trajectory of the country for an extended period of time, how we law allow crony capitalism to become borderline capitalistic fascism and crony fascism, corporate fascism, uh, yeah, I'd be concerned about the future. I'd be concerned about jobs. I'd be concerned about uh, climate change. I'd be concerned about quality of air, the chemicals that are put into your food. I'd be concerned about a lot of different things. You know, it's not any one thing. Um, but yes, you should be. Uh, Don Jimmy 100, would the Schleg Daddy fuck any woman regardless of race? Okay. The way you worded that question would be like, I would fuck any woman anywhere in time. That answer would be no. But if it was a hot white girl, or a Hispanic girl, or an Arabian girl, or an Indian girl, Hispanic Latin girl, yeah, absolutely. Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I? This happens to me, I always end up dick and black women. Doesn't mean that that would be all that I would do. Uh, at MacDog714, do your new cats remind you of your old cats? Uh, yes, sometimes. Um, I look at them and there will be traits and characteristics that they do that remind me of the old cats. But they are their own felines. They have their own personalities. Because uh, frankly, I think Summer sometimes reminds me a lot of the cats too. Especially in some of her mannerisms and the way she acts. Like, for example, Smokey would be notorious for if you left your plate out too long, that motherfucker would take take a full sausage link or patty from me. He'd take a whole strip of bacon. He would take a whole piece of toast, you know, depending on how hard the times were, obviously. And he, I mean, he would take it. He'd carry it like a fucking dog because it was 30 pounds of big, gray, and sexy. And after he did that, he'd go in the corner and lick himself. Why? Because he could. And that's why he was beast. But Summer will do that kind of crap, too. Uh, so, but yes, they do some. Um, Cricket Sam 64 
What do you think about Brexit and how it will affect America? I don't necessarily know how it will affect America. I will be perfectly honest. Is I don't have a ton of opinion about it because I really haven't cared about it and I haven't really cared to educate about myself about it or learn much about it. You know, and sometimes I see like people have opinions about it and you can tell it's not really coming from a place where they've educated themselves on it or they bothered to actually study on it or learn about it or anything like that. I really don't know much about it, so I really don't care about it. You know, could it have an effect in terms of currency uh, values for the U.S. dollar compared to the euro or the pound? I don't know. Um, does that have an effect on trade in any way? I don't know. Um, I understand why some of the people in Britain would want to uh, carry out Brexit because there could be concerns about over-globalization of the economy and what happens if a country like Greece is in a bad, bad way in terms of the euro, what happens to everybody else, do you get sucked into the vortex? That's a very legitimate, viable concern. Um, but again, maybe you live there and that's why you're asking the question. I just don't care because from, from a big picture standpoint, in terms of my day-to-day -day life, it just doesn't matter. Like, you know, and I think that about that sometimes just from an overall political standpoint, you can have, I can have opinions about everything, but sometimes I think it's important for me, and I think definitely for other people too, to take a step back and say, does this really impact me? Does it really matter to me? Does it, do I really truly need to care about this? And a lot of times I think the answer is no. And this is one of those. Uh, Swag Pizza 27 closes us out. What makes the sisters different than all the rest for you? You know, we can talk about how much Jeffy likey, but did you ever ask the question, how much do they likey? And at the end of the day, I could just sense there's like, it's a vibe that I put off. Like when I encounter black women in public, they know. So there's naturally a peaking of the interest. There was just more natural interest. Uh, there's definitely more comfort level there for me. Um, so it's only natural. Um, I think some of it is about, based off of backgrounds, being able to relate better, um, being more naturally attracted to them, especially now at my age, you know, in a couple of weeks here, I'll be 36, you know, th this is just the way it is. Black doesn't crack nearly as much as white girls and so on, and, you know, when you start to see white women my age, if they've had a kid or two kids or three kids, they, a lot of times, look tore up from the floor because they stop taking care of themselves, they get sloppy. Uh, all the years of wearing makeup and crap all over their face, using tanners and all those other garbage. Their skin looks horrible. They look like they're 60, even when they do put makeup on. They just look bow wow awful. So, I mean, there's a superficial element to it, too. There's just a lot of different things. And I've talked about this stuff before in the past and probably will again. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this Q&A. This was all right. You know, like I said, to mix it up every once in a while. I don't plan on doing it all the time. But it was fun for what it was. Thanks again, and stay tuned for more videos coming up soon about wrestling this time.